Hello, welcome back. We're almost to our final lesson. And we must pick up where we left off last time. Juliet went to see the friar. Act 4, scene 1. Paris was there. And he gave her time for confession. And she says she has a knife with her. With this knife. With this bloody knife and she tells the friar that she's thinking about killing herself very horrifying there is actually a lot of spooky imagery that juliet says to the friar she says this oh bid me leap rather than marry paris in other words i'll jump off the building from off the battlements of any tower or bid me lurk where serpents are I'd rather stay with snakes than marry Paris. Chain me with roaring berries. So, so, or bid me go into a new made grave. Ricky shanks, yellow chapless cows. Bid me go into a new made grave and hide me with a dead man in his shroud. It's very scary imagery to think about images of snakes around her, bears around her, or put her in a grave ne next to dead people. These are the things that she'd rather do. We're going back in time in this play, and Shakespeare's age, it is not like today. Today, when you watch a movie, they can show all cool stuff and great special effects, but was Juliet, when Shakespeare, what he had to do, he had to use words to create those images in our mind. I think it's very interesting. The difference between that day and today of how do we um, understand, how do we help the audience um, use the imagery. So, no, Friar doesn't want Juliet to kill herself. He's a man of religion. He knows that killing oneself is the worst thing you can do. You're destined to go to hell. So what he does instead is he... Um, tells her to take this vial and when you drink it, it will put you into appearance of death. Everyone will think that you're dead, they will take you down to the tomb, I will send a letter to Romeo, tell him what happened, he will come to the tomb and you two can be together. It's a pretty crazy plan and I wonder if it goes with Aristotle's idea of the probability of what happens. Would a friar really do this? But we already know that friar Friar has helped them before, and I believe that, and I know that the Friar, he thinks at this point that he has made a mistake and he is trying to fix it, that virtue misapplied. Anyway, Juliet takes the vial and she wants to follow through the Friar's plan. We move forward here um, and the plot really begins to speed up. It's very clear, speeding up faster and faster. We jump ahead to where they, they're studying, prepare for a wedding um, of Juliet, scene four, with Paris. And we notice <coughs> the Capulet says in line 15, make haste, again, make haste. And then we jump over, make haste, line 26, 27, make haste, make haste, make haste. That's a lot of haste going on there. And keep that in mind here. This is a very interesting scene. Um, the nurse needs to make haste. She runs to Juliet's room and what does she see? Juliet has drunk the vial the friar gave her and she's lying on the bed and the nurse thinks that she's dead. Now, we the audience, we know she's not. That's called dramatic irony. So the audience, we know that she's not dead but everyone um, in the audience believes and everyone on, uh, I mean everyone on stage believes lady 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 alas help help my lady's dead so the Capulet finds out and then what he says life in this lips have long been separated death lies on her like an untimely frost upon the sweetest flower of all the field so um, has death lain with thy wife there she lies, flower as she was deflowered by him. Death is my son-in-law, death is my heir. So he personifies death. He's saying that death itself 
has married my daughter. Very interesting idea there of the idea of being married with death. But later, when we will see that Romeo and Juliet become actually married in death. Here we have married with death and later married in death. Keep that in mind and uh, you will see how this will happen in the final act of the play. Now, why is that so important? I think this is a big idea when you think about it. So here in life, we know that we separate from other people. And I've mentioned that idea before about language. So language is a skin. Skin is a point of connection that we have with the world and that point of connection that we have with others. But skin is also that obstacle to being with the other. So think about that idea. With death, isn't it true that in death, that's when we're truly united with the other person? This idea is not my own idea. This idea comes from Sigmund Freud, the psychologist. He says that all of us will want to be united with other people, but being alive, having a body, having skin keeps us separate. And here we see clearly this idea when Juliet is married with death and later the only way that she can really be with Romeo is after they are dead, the death drive. Very interesting that Shakespeare picks upon this idea 300 years before Sigmund Freud does. After this, they discover that she's dead and the friar is like, oh, no more, she's in heaven. He's trying to make things ha um, happier for everyone because he feels so horrible for everyone. He knows she is not dead. The nurse thinks she is dead and they're doing the wedding. So downstairs in the house, you can imagine, in the stage, they're putting out flowers, preparing music, then Capulets. Um, let's look over here. The wedding. This is in Act Scene 5. Scene 5. Hmm? Act 4. All things change them to their contrary. Here we go. I want you to take everything and switch over and make it a funeral. So I guess if there are pink and red flowers, we should change them to white and yellow flowers. If they're like everyone is wearing white, you should wear black. So change everything to the contrary. He's even talking to the musician. They have to play some uh, happy music, change it to the contrary, play some happy music. But I like this line for another reason. Change for another, another reason. All of the older people in the play say, have to say, slow down, be patient. Now we have Capulet saying the opposite idea, the contrary, make haste, make haste, make haste. Don't we have the sense that young people, they don't know what they know, what is going on in life, but we see the scene when Romeo and Juliet are much wiser in the Capulets and they're so hot, getting very angry. He wants to hit his daughter. We see that all things are changing to the country. And keep in mind, because soon Paris, Paris will turn into Romeo. He will become his opposite character. You will see this in the final act of the play. All things change to their country. Okay, one thing that I want to discuss before we um, move to the last act in our next lesson, some of comedic characters in the play. Mercutio, has some comedic scenes. <clears throat> They're supposed to be funny. You're supposed to laugh at him. And the nurse is also a comedic character. You're supposed, why do we do this in the tragedy? We have a story that's very, very sad. Why are these scenes of comedy put in there at all? Should not be the whole play be tragic? We see in one of these scenes that's in the end of at four, when Capulet says change all things to the country now, the musicians have to play sad music and then Peter uh, comes and he says, musicians, no musicians, play hearts ease. And musicians say, why hearts ease? And Peter says, oh musicians, because my heart itself plays, my heart is full. Oh, play me some merry dump to comfort me. And the musician says, not a dump, we, tis no time to play. You will not then know, I will give it to you suddenly 
What will you give to us? No money. I will give you. I'll ray. I'll fa you, do re mi, do re mi fa. The song. <laughs> do you know? Do you note us? <laughs> note us. Notice. It's a funny scene, but it's pretty much out of play. Why is this funny scene? I think there are a couple reasons maybe two or three so one's a practical reason so think that this is being performed on stage they're about to go to act five and they need time to go behind stage and change their clothes they need time to change the setting of the scene put some trees in whatever to make it look different that's kind of a practical reason another sort of practical reason is if you're writing a tragedy you need to give the audience an emotional break you can't keep hitting them with horrible sad scenes of death and tragedy over and over again. You have to pause, let them laugh a little bit, change their emotions and prepare them for the next tragedy that comes about. Another reason for this, I think, is that they, it adds to the sense of realism in the play. Remember, tragedies are supposed to be real. If they don't seem real, they don't strike us as tragic. This is much like real life, it's true, the tragic things happen, but even in tragedy there is humor. There are people who don't care or who don't know, and that can add to the tragic element and make it more realistic. Okay, so let's pause there for now, and our next lesson we'll talk about the last act.